Welcome to Blender Session Live Noding. In this episode, I want to share with you this example. Uh, basically, one of them is using shader nodes and displacement. The other one is using geometry nodes. As we already, uh, probably most of us already know, uh, with shader in Blender, we can displace objects uh, using all kind of textures and we can displace it at pixel level uh, during render time. And so this is what's going on. So this is only showing up when we render this out. Um, I want to show you this because we know that with shaders, we have all kind of procedural texture like brick, checker, noise, mask grave, Voronoi, all kind of texture that's already available for a while. And this is for the shader. But with geometry nodes, uh, recently, only recently, we have all kind of new nodes that's actually generating procedural texture. And this is very much mirroring the one on the shader. So now we can actually, uh, with geometry nodes, using the similar setup and displacing an object. So this is actually like uh, this default cube that's being displayed displays uh, using geometry nodes and the setup is basically similar to the shader uh, we are basically displacing it using the normal of the objects okay I will actually set this up from scratch so you understand what's going on so this is the default cube let me save this so this is procedural shader and with this default cube, we can subdivide, right? So we can use subdivision using Cutmill Clark or using simple. So it's subdividing, but keeping keeping the shape of the default cube. And then we can use shader to displace this object. So we need to turn on cycles and also enable experimental because we want to turn on adaptive subdivision at some point so let's create a quick texture just noise texture and then displacement we can use displacement or vector displacement both of them will be useful one of them is can use you can use color the other one is for the just a simple value to push this box in the normal. Okay, let's let's give this a try. So at the moment we are only getting the bump, but we go under the material. We can turn on the bump and displacement, or just yeah both. So now you can see. Now the default cube has been displaced on the fly and you can turn on adaptive subdivision so it's gonna ab adaptively subdivide based on the details so this is basically uh, what it is this is the basic we can use Cutmill Clark or simple um, we can actually use multiple subdivisions the last one Actually, you can control like the boundaries, etc. So you, first one, you can have simple. Second one, you have cut more clock. So we get this result. Clean and nice. But this is only available during render time. So the whole thing is still procedural. This one, however, using this modifier that's subdividing on the fly and then displacement is by the shader okay and then you can use vector displacement i think this will give you a totally different result more uh, noisy it's just uh i cannot explain it exactly but this one is using R rgb to disturb the points in xyz okay and you can actually use this noise plug this into the base color so you can see the result OK, 
Okay, so let's keep it simple for now. Something like this. So we have what we have, what I show you earlier. So now we're gonna do the same thing using geometry nodes. With geometry nodes, everything happens on the geometry before even using any shader. So the geometry we want to subdivide. We have two options, subdivide mesh or subdiv subdivision surface. I'm gonna show you the difference. With subdivision surface, we have like a Cutmore Clark kind of subdivision and then we can control the crease. Maybe we want something like this. Okay, it's nice. You can subdivide f further or before to get more details. So if you look at the wireframe, you can see it, it has subdivision already. Now we just need to disturb this using vector math, etc. Not as obvious, but you can get the normal or you can get the positions and then you can also set positions okay we what we need is set position we want to offset we want to offset this guy using some kind of value vector value this is what the geometry nodes field is all about i think so now let's grab a texture uh, we have all kind of new texture now our favorite Voronoi, noise mass grave even we also have brick let's try something like noise the basic one if we plug this into the offset we already have the effects of plugging rgb into this guy into the objects geometry so we probably don't want that. We want to use vector math and using the scale. So using the origin, the normal of this object, and we want to scale it using the noise. Plug this into the offset. So now we have practically, they are very similar. This one's slightly different, but we can always use remapping and try, try to clamp the value we can even invert the value if we want to if you want to see the noise coming out coming from this guy into these objects we can turn on vertex color so we have this vertex colors att attributes that we can connect from noise texture inside geometry nodes so here for the output we can just say okay use the just pass the color into the vertex color data of this guy and then we have new shader that we can connect the attribute from okay so now the noise is correlates from this guy over here into the result cool all right now uh, maybe we want to have like smooth shade set smooth shade turn on so we have nice result okay it crashes because this blender 3.0 is still kind of alpha but you can turn it on back um, very quickly so that's the bug okay cool send it set smooth i think set smooth actually crashed this uh, earlier so this guy is being subdivided at render time this one uh, actually being generated and already subdivided and already disturb before even we use this if this guy uses use the set, the original material you can see the effects this guy maybe we need to subdivide one more time and then adaptive subdivision 
and we also want to turn on displacement and bump okay it's already turned on so this guy is a combination of geometry nodes and the shader together okay maybe we don't need that for now just keep it simple so back to our setup here geometry subdivide and set the positions using procedural texture so this is pretty cool uh, pretty simple setup also we can do it this way like using add we can we can use position and noise texture combined together into the offset we get a different result totally um, let's so that's two example let's try a different one involving normal scale so this is the setup the basic the most basic setup normal scale map range and some kind of procedural noise in fact maybe it's a good idea to just frame it so with this same setup we can select another texture procedural like a mask gray for example this one okay it has height value that we can plug and this one can go into the offset so similar except that we have mask grave mask grave is like it's almost like a it's almost like noise but it seems to be clamped at some point so we have something that's more like like a mountain It's uh, sometimes it's looking like a cheese like or like some kind of sponge. Yeah, that's that's basically what my scrape texture looks like. So this is the setup. We can group this. Duplicate. Oh, I want to get rid of the frame for now. Okay, let's try another one. The simple one, of course, is checker. See, checker will give you checker pattern. So currently, I, I'm not sure, we don't have like a UV. I don't know how to get the UV from these objects. I'm pretty sure there's there's a way to do that at some point, just to resample texture based on the UV of the objects. For now, it's actually using the the geometry itself in three D. So check our pattern. We can let's try something else. Let's try the brick pattern. So brick value, we have bricks that's been projected into these objects in 3D. If you want to see this clearly, so this is, this is what it is at the moment. Let's check the shader. In, instead of using uh, noise texture, let's replace this with texture brick. Plug this into the displacement. So this is the brick working as displacement on the default cube. Okay, the same thing, same deal with the geometry nodes. Um, so brick textures, map range. We should get something that's looking very similar. In fact, I can plug this into the color. So we have the bricks and you can see how this is being projected. Let's stop this. The nice thing about geometry nodes, it's a real geometry. It's almost real time and we can, we can sort of see it.
Okay, apparently I need to go minus, kind of like uh, the reverse. <clears throat> okay, I think this is uh, pretty much what I want to show you. It's a pretty basic, pretty simple, but still I think pretty useful and kind of introductions into procedural textures and how you can displace an object in geometry nodes and also for the shader. And this is really uh, useful um, for a lot of things. And if you are doing like a node vember where people posted all kind of cool stuff with, uh, with node setup uh, on Twitter, you can try doing something like this. Uh, just to add details to your geometries and also to your objects that using just shader nodes or procedural textures. All right, so hopefully you find this useful. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you, bye.